Welcome to Television Sydney News. I'm Gemma Seymour. It's great to have you with us. In this week's bulletin, heavy rainfall has residents on flood alert, a white water competition puts raft making skills to the test, and Australia's longest serving paid firefighter retires at 82. But first, police investigating drug and gun crime in Sydney's southwest swooped on members of an Assyrian criminal syndicate during dawn raids on Wednesday. Four men aged between 18 and 20 were taken into custody. They were charged with more than 30 offences, including supplying drugs and participating in a criminal group. None of the men applied for bail. They will appear in Fairfield Local Court on March 12. A Liverpool man pleaded guilty on Monday to defrauding private hospitals of $3.1 million and using the money to fund a suburban football club. Rahid Alahad Khan, aged 37, pleaded guilty to stealing hospital property, possessing suspected stolen goods and three counts of obtaining money by deception. The offences took place while he was working as a supply manager at St Vincent and Mata Hospitals and the Sydney South West Private Hospital in Liverpool. He remains in custody and will be sentenced on May 25. Parents were being warned not to send their children to school on Friday as communities along the Hawkesbury Nepean River were bracing for flooding. The Bureau of Meteorology was predicting as early as Tuesday that the North Richmond and Windsor bridges could close later in the week as a result of flooding. Police and the State Emergency Service have urged people not to enter flood water. For updates, visit the SES website. Businesses in Blacktown are urged to ensure cooling towers are maintained and treated after a rise in Legionnaire's disease in the past month. The Western Sydney Local Health District said six cases of the disease were reported last month, compared with one case for the same month last year. Vicky Shepherd from the Western Sydney Public Health Unit said three people had been treated at Blacktown Hospital. She said the type of Legionnaire's found recently was caused by bacteria present in low levels in the environment, which could grow to dangerous levels levels in cooling towers and warm water systems. Penrith's Business Advisory Centre fears that new state government funding arrangements could spell the end of the service. The centre's Executive Officer John Todd is hopeful funding will continue, but says the new arrangements are more complex. The state government is tendering for its new Small Biz Connect program, whereas before there was a set program for funding. Penrith MP Stuart Ayres says he will support continued funding of the service. A Tourism New South Wales report has revealed Cabramatta and Campbelltown are unpopular destinations for tourists. More than 1,600 people from Melbourne, Brisbane, the ACT and regional New South Wales were surveyed to gauge their awareness and interest in areas of Sydney. Cabramatta ranked lowest in terms of tourists interested in visiting, just ahead of Campbelltown, Picton, Camden and Penrith. Wakeley resident Alyssa Alzamora will have her 2011 Harmony Day poster put on exhibition. The 11-year-old was named runner-up in her regional age division after more than 6,000 students entered the poster competition. The contest was run to coincide with Harmony Day on March 21, which celebrates Australia's ethnic diversity. The exhibition is being held at the University of Western Sydney Bankstown campus in the Margaret Hardy Gallery. After 52 years of preparing 936,000 sandwiches for staff and visitors, the Sutherland Hospital kiosk has finally raised more than $2 million. The kiosk is run by 84 volunteers whose tireless work has helped provide the hospital with more than 420 items of life-saving medical equipment. Kiosk President Margaret McCarahan of Cronulla said the volunteers had helped to improve the quality of life for many patients. The Director of Operations at St George and Sutherland Hospital Hospitals, Kath Whitehurst said the community was fortunate to have such a hard-working group of volunteers. A new cafe in Campbelltown is giving young people who have recently migrated or come from disadvantaged backgrounds a chance to break into the workforce. Cafe Culture in Queen Street is the latest project of MacArthur Diversity Services Initiative and will take on the youth as trainees. We run a number of youth programs and uh, what, what we found is that a, a number of young people um, from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds don't get the opportunity to do work um, during their, their, I guess, their pre-teenage years because their parents want them to focus on on studying and studying because that's a very strong focus. And then what happens is that by the time they finish uni or by the time they finish 
um, high school, they uh, are a bit too old to enter the, the employment market. The cafe is aimed at office workers, community groups requiring catering and aged care groups. All money raised from the cafe will go towards MacArthur Diversity Services Initiative. It's full steam ahead for locomotive buffs in Thirlmere this weekend as it comes alive with some of the state's oldest rolling stock. Trainworks will unveil its most historic trains for Saturday's Vintage Train Day and Sunday's Festival of Steam. About 15,000 locomotive buffs are expected at this year's festival when Thomas the Tank Engine makes his inaugural Steam Festival appearance. Bottle Grove's Paige Chandler is one of eight Liverpool Swimming Club members headed to the 2012 London Olympic Game Trials in Adelaide this month. At the recent state age titles, the 13-year-old won bronze in her age group for the 200 metres butterfly. Paige, who trains under Ben Tuxford at the Whitlam Leisure Centre, was recently awarded Liverpool Council's Australia Day Sports Award. The trials will also double as the national titles. And rising track and field star Christy Pond has received the New South Wales Sports Federation Young Athlete with a Disability Award. The teenager's achievements include 30 Australian disabled records and the world number two ranking in the 200 metre wheelchair track event. The 15 year old who has cerebral palsy is hoping to continue her good form from last year and qualify for the London Paralympics in July. She has been named in the preliminary Australian Paralympic squad and will compete for the final selection in the coming months. And she's relocated three times to pursue her Olympic ambitions, but Penrith born and bred Katie Worth is now on the final stretch towards her dream. The 16 year old gymnast in, is in the Australian squad for the London Games and will compete for one of 12 spots at the national championships in May. She must perform well across four apparatus to remain in the squad. Katie says she will feel a mixture of emotions before the championships, but is confident in her ability to impress selectors. And 19 teams were set to hit the Rapids at the Penrith Whitewater Stadium at the weekend. Teams in the Red Bull Rapids competition have been busy building homemade rafts, hoping they can withstand the water. One team from the Lower Mountains is hopeful their Commodore-inspired raft will get them over the line. One of the guys, Andy, is an apprentice carpenter, so he's got the necessary skills. And if you look at the frame, it actually looks a bit like a roof. And that's that influence there. And then we got olive drums from London Dairy for 10 bucks each and strap them on the side. And then it's got plywood on the outside to make it look like a Commodore. The event follows the international debut in Nottingham in the United Kingdom in September. And Australia's longest serving paid firefighter retired this week after 61 years on the job. Peter Nankervis joined the Blackheath Brigade in 1951 and has signed off for the last time on Wednesday. Christina Pollard reports. Australia's longest serving paid firefighter has retired after more than six decades on the job. Peter Charles Nankovis joined what's now Fire and Rescue New South Wales on January 2, 1951 and retired at a sprightly 82 years old on Wednesday. New South Wales Fire and Rescue Commissioner Greg Mullins joined 60 guests at Blackheath Flyer Station on the day to pay tribute to Mr Nankovis's 61 years and one month of service. That deep, deep commitment, community commitment, it's not about money, it is about looking after your mates, looking after your community, and you've done such a wonderful job for so many decades, so my deep and sincere thanks for what you've done. Mr Nankovis shared the spotlight with John Kearney on the day, who will retire shortly after 41 years and four months service. Both were presented with National Medals of Service and the New South Wales Fire and Rescue Long Service and Good Conduct Medal, as well as a watch. Mr Nankovis, who was accompanied by his wife Gwen, said he'd seen many changes over the years. When I first started we had a, we had a 250 Dennis and that was it. That was for house fires, bush fires for the lot. Now the equipment's improved a thousand percent. And the training has improved out of sight. Mr Nankovis retired as the brigade's deputy captain, a position he's held since 1983. I can assure you, Peter's the first one on the appliance. So there's no, he hasn't sat around and, and not done much. Peter um, is as fit as, I, I employ four of him tomorrow. 
And that's all the news we have time for today. For more information on any of these stories, pick up your local Fairfax community newspaper. We'll see you next time.